Hey guys, how's, how's it going today? So, I'm going to go over another book review. Um, <clears throat> this one's on The Mindful Athlete, Secrets to Peer Performance by George Mumford. See this guy here, George Mumford. Um, he was um, he was a sports psychologist, I believe, of um, uh, Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Kobe Bryant as well, Shaquille O'Neal. And I think he also helped LeBron James. And I think now he's... Um, He's in the New York Knicks, basically, and they're the establishment trying to help them out as well. Um, with their team, you know, um, psychologically, physically, mentally, etc. So, um, he's um, he's a really good, really good guy, and this is a really good book. So, um, I'm, I'm going to be going over the book here today. Um, and I will explain, basically, first, um, well, I'll explain right now, actually, what are the what are the book's content? So, um, the um, contents of the book basically are really just um, um, are really just you know um, what he does really is that he uh, is that he though separates what he means being being mindful is in like separate. Uh, ch chapters and then he goes into into depth basically you know so like one chapter is called you know, the zone um, another one's called c concentration focused awareness another one's called the right effort for it forget thyself etc so he so in, in the, every chapter basically he just um, um breaks it down basically and then he goes into depth um as well with a examples from his own life and from his experience basically on um on um what it is to be mindful um and then I, and then i will also share actually what are these secrets to peer performance and there are five five steps to them so um i'm just gonna like to jump right into the book basically of what i got out of the book and um how it can help you guys maybe or if not so first the thing uh, as well, you know, it's important to remember like what um, Stephen Covey said. So if you guys have read Stephen Covey's book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, he talks about the importance of the, um, staying within your circle of influence, basically. What um, what um, George Mumford here calls the, the zone, basically, you know, and that's staying in, you know, with the, like what you have control over and what you can influence, basically. Um and then um, outside of um, the, um, the zone, George Mumford calls it your realm of distraction, basically, you know. So he uses the, the an, an analogy of um, Kobe Bryant. One of his, uh, like, the stories um, is of him, Kobe Bryant, how, like, he was playing one time an NBA basketball game. Um, and there was two, um, two famous actors, you know, yelling to his ear. One of them was Chris Rock, I think it was. Um, and the other one was, um, a, a, another actor and they were yelling into his ear, you know, to like try to distract him. Right. But, but they said, you know, but though he said, you know, Kobe Bryant had though nurtured what though he had taught him about being mindful in the present moment, basically. And so he had, um, sort of like wiped out everyone out of his realm of distraction. And he only focused on, um, in the zone, um, on his game, basically. And so he says, you know, that's what, you know, Dis distinguish a lot, a lot of times Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan, for instance, from a lot of the other NBA basketball players, right? So, um, so now I'm going to be talking about mindfulness, basically, right? Um, so when I talk about mindfulness, basically, um, mindfulness basically just means being in the present moment, right? Um, if you guys uh, watch YouTube videos on another one of um, J of um, George Muffer's friend, friend John Kabat Zinn, he talks about that you know that the mindfulness means that just to be now in in the present moment, you you yourself now here, um, and so um, and so um, uh, George Mumford basically um, um, explains a method. Which though he has, you know, used, you know, throughout his life, basically, and 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 how he's also teach other athletes as well to also use this the same method, and it's and, and it's the method, and it's the method I use, um, and it and it though it works on me, so it, um, you could also probably try this. So what he calls mindfulness is um 
from what I took out of it, is called the AOB, basically. Um, and what that stands for, that stands for awareness of awareness of breath. So um, uh, George George Mumford uses the um, um, object of attention, which is which is which is the, the like the breathing, right? So like he says that um, when you don't know, like to like to um, breathe, basically, and when you become aware of your breath, right? So in in moments where though you might feel stressed, in moments where though you might feel anxious. Um, in moments where though you might feel depressed, in, in moments where though you might feel overwhelmed, right? This is a really good te technique, and what it is basically is just though simply breathing in and out, in and out slowly, um, and as you breathe in and out, to um, become aware of though how your lungs move, basically, you know, to to, to like you become aware basically of though of though um, of though. Um, how the air, you know, goes um, in your lungs, um, down to your uh, alveoli, and then of course, you know, shoots, you know, back up, basically outwards, right? And so it's um, and so it's um, it's still becoming aware of that, right? Another form of you know, like the mindfulness, basically, is just you know, um, when you don't um, feel, you know, um, like you don't like the. You know, speaker for instance right so when i go to some seminars and stuff and i don't like um who's actually speaking um instead of really listening to them basically because everyone is listening to them so it causes what what um um psychologists call you know association bias you know as well as the authority bias basically when you have everyone looking at them looking towards one towards one speaker right so so how I can actually um, move away from that, basically, I just don't become aware of though how I'm actually s s sitting down. So I become aware of um, how my clothes are like though or like though touching my 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 body. I become aware of though how my hands are like placed. I become aware of though um, how my neck is placed, basically, and just by becoming aware of that, I actually move away from my realm of distraction to um to um to the zone basically where i can co concentrate on the present moment now um the um aob uh, again which is the awareness of breath basically right um george mufford says that though when you um when, when you start to though, practice that on a habitual basis right um what that what though like that that'll do basically is that in our body basically um um, 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 we have what's called the automatic nervous system, basically, right? And so we have the um, sympathetic nervous system, and we have the parasympathetic nervous system. And so um, with the um, sympathetic ner nervous system, of course, you know, that's um, when we um, have these emotional impulses, basically, towards um, stimuli, and we um feel, you know, f fearful, anxious, stressed, and then though we also react that way, right? Um, and that's, and that's, um, and that's actually called fight and flight reactions. Um, and so what uh, George Mumford said is that by cultivating this though, um, um, awareness of breath, of breath, we actually activate what's called our parasympathetic, our parasympathetic nervous system, which um, releases a though, neurotransmitter um, throughout our Thought our brain, I think, um, called um, acetylcholine, and what that does is that um, smooths out everything, so that we um, so we think you know calmer, so that um, we so we don't have this um, fight and flight reactions, right? And so what um, George Mumford says basically is that when we're in these times of low extreme stress, extreme depression, or when we have a, a lot of noise um, hitting our ears, right? He says we have to be the the eye of the hurricane. If you guys know how the analogy works, basically, right? If this is a though, um, if this is a though, like the hurricane, right? Um, and there's a lot of wind speed around, right? Pilots can actually s still fly with within the hurricane. Within the hurricane, there is fine. It's only um, when you get out by the wind does it actually um, um, affect the um, the actual flight, right? So what he says is that you have to be the eye of, of, of the hurricane. This storm, in spite of all the you know, like the wind pulling pulling around you, you are still um, within your zone, basically concentrated on the present moment. That's the main point about it. Now, um, 
when you become concentrated on, on the present moment, what that does, basically, um, Mothra points out, is that that um, separates becoming aware of something and becoming mindful that that you are aware of something, right? So, like, um, for instance, when you're when when you're angry, right? Naturally, of course, we become aware that we're angry, of course, because um because we have this emotional impulse towards a towards a, towards a stimuli, which then though makes us angry, right? And then we don't feel angry, and then we exert you know behavior and actions which um which so like to show that, right? But what um mindfulness does basically is that become by becoming mindful. Um, of your anger, what though George Muffer says is that if though, for instance, this is you basically, right? What you're doing actually is that you're standing outside of yourself basically, and and you're and you're and you're looking on on yourself, right? So um, it's kind of like that, like uh, analogy of like having a though bird's eye view, topographical viewpoint of your life basically. You want um by becoming mindful of yourself and of the situation, basically, you're actually though t t taking yourself out of yourself, basically, and looking on yourself, so that um you can see um around you more more clearly, and um so you um so you know to not have that emotional impulse, right? Um, and that's the wonderful thing about it, and that's the and that's the beautiful thing about it, right? And then of course, right when when you're the eye of, of the hurricane, right, having though um, um, activated your the parasympathetic nervous system, right, you also um, um, unload a lot of that unnecessary uh, emotional baggage, right? So uh, you don't feel like you have this humongous load of the um, of the emotional waste on you, right? That's something you don't want on you, people. Um, because of course, in in my opinion, it's not about the emotions; it's about the mood, really. You know, so um, you don't want to be too, you know, neurotic. You know, um, which which I take it to be basically as you know, when um, when you have an um, emotion and, and and you have a like though like the reaction, neurotic people tend to carry on that same emotional reaction. And turn it into a mood, so it though prolongs, and you don't want to do that. You want to, um, you want to calm down. And even if you do have the emotional re reaction, know that that is um, um outside of, of your control. But that what you do to yourself, basically, or though how you activate your parasympathetic nervous system to become the eye of the hurricane is within your control. So that's the most important thing, right? Now, um, um. Now, of course, um, another point, uh, another actually important point that I got from the book is what Mumford t talks about the five superpowers, really. And what he means by that is that he will, he calls it um, mindfulness, concentration, insight, right effort, trust. So, um, um, you guys can read more a a about it if you guys buy the book. Um, I won't go into that. But um, what I will go into is, like I told you guys, on there is some secrets to pure performance, right? So what are they? So they are five, five, um, five steps, right? Um, now um, there are, you know, concentration, outcome, expectation, visualization, intention, deliberate, deliberate, del, del, deliberate practice. One more time: concentration, outcome, expectation, visualization, intention, deliberate practice. So, um, of course, um, um, when you're, um, when you're though, like though thinking about pure performance, right? The you know, first thing is to become, um, is to first concentrate and though, um, focus on the, um, um, task at hand. Then of course is to have like, like an outcome expectation, right? Um, and then, um, the, you know, um, third step, um, is to have kinesthetic visualization um, so when I said visualization really what that what um, George Mumford was um, mentioning was um, kinesthetic vis visualization and what that means basically is that um, that the, the, that means cultivating this though um, mindfulness of you actually going throughout the course basically um, un until the end right so if, if, if you want to run for instance um, like a um, three to four mile marathon basically right 
um, kinesthetic visualization means that you witness yourself outside of yourself. Again, having this, you know, topographical bird's eye viewpoint of yourself, basically. And you go, um, imagine yourself running the course, basically, and, and what kind of um, hurdles we'll be going over, you know, how how will you feel, etc. right? And by having this um, bird's eye view on yourself, right, where then you become more aware of, of the um, of the how the um, uh, marathon course will will be, what do you will have to do, um, um, how do you know how to control your emotional impulses if you feel um, if you feel hyped up, etc. Um, and then of course intention. Of course, you have to have the intention to um to actually want to do it. And then and then lastly, deliberate practice. That means actually going out there and doing it, right? Um, as as the saying goes, practice makes practice makes perfect. So it's um practice is is basically a complex of of habits, and so that's what you want to do. You know, cultivate them. That you know, practicing a lot. Now. Um, to um, end it, basically, um, I'll say this quote, which he states a lot, which is actually one of my favorite quotes. He quotes um, um, Bruce Lee and says, "You know, um, Bruce Lee said, you know, I fear, I fear not the man that does ten thousand kick once, but I fear the man that um, does one kick ten thousand times." Right. So what Mumford means there, basically, is that it's not really about doing it all once, basically, but it's about doing it on a consistent ritualized basis right um and then mumford um mumford is um a lot into um um the um starting point basically because he says that you know um having the end game in mind it actually though distracts you to um, um, um start basically at the start so it's um so it's all about the um starting point and it's about um building up that you know ritualized um habit basically and so that's what it's all about, basically. Um, um, another way to also, you know, put it down, basically, is that, like what um, Anthony Robbins says, right? Every, every day you want to raise your standards, um, and then you ha and then you should have rituals which still uh, they'll add up to that standard, um, to that standard, basically. And that's what you want in life. So um, again, a fascinating book, guys. Um, I do highly recommend whoever wants to buy this book to actually buy it. Um, um, it has a, a lot of good content in it, um, and it's helped me a lot as well. Um, and if you guys have any questions, of course, you know, um, please, you know, write down anything below as well, and I'll be happy to answer anything. And I'll see you guys on the next book review.